If you want a bagger and you want a set of bars, but you're not trying to break the bank or wait forever, I think I got the solution for you. 12 inch bars, these are, don't know the brand. Um, they're like, all of them are meat hooks to me uh, with the points at the top, I'll show you in a second. Super easy to do, stock cables, stock wires. Let's get into it, let's show you how to do it. First things first, let's get over to the bike. All right, for starters, take your key, key fob, take it. Go into your ignition, a little button up underneath here. You're gonna press in, you can turn out, pull your key out. That's the little button you press right there. Hard to see. Then, I already loosened this, because I started before I started filming. Take this off, slide that up. Step one is done. You're gonna start taking off your windshield hardware. Typically what I like to do is loosen the fr the middle one, take off the side, then after that you can get your windshield off relatively easy. Sometimes you gotta pull a little bit, sometimes you gotta loosen this a little more. You do not have to take that all the way off. There it goes. Once your windshield's off, take out our hardware for the fairing. The, uh, the other one's up here, it's probably hard to see. This is why I say leave the top middle one in for the windshield, solely due to the fact that you don't want to go taking all these screws out, or these hardware, this hardware out, and your fairing fall off and nobody's there to get, grab it for you. You have a very long one, you have a short one. Long one goes up by the mirror. This one goes down by the bottom. If you have an older street glide or electric glide, they will be in different spots. You got two on each side. Just double check so it's not gonna fall off. All right, got those out. Now all you have to do, lift up on your fairing, pull back. Reach up in here, take your plug off. Sorry, you guys probably can't see this. If I can reach my fat fingers in here. Thing, but yeah. All right, so I use a pick sometimes to get this one out. Uh, it all depends on how the light is. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. The next step once we get our fairing off is to take off our turn signals, which is a half inch. So yeah, half inch and then nine sixteenths, which I neglected to grab. Do that on both sides. Just press down that little tab, pops right up. Now you take your five thirty seconds. Yep, five thirty seconds. And you go to this screw right here. Right there. This takes your dash uh, bezel off. Get those off, super simple. You just pull out from the bottom. It hooks in at the top, just like that. The easiest way now is to take your fairing, pick up, tilt backwards. It is not going to fall, all right? It, has, it is captured right here. This spot is not going to fall the bottom has like a gap in it, but right now you're fine. This ain't going nowhere. It might fall forward a little bit more, but it will not fall off of your motorcycle so long as you do not pick it up and, you know, pull it off. Like, it's not going anywhere. So dash bezel, the clips, uh, the one on the right side of the bike right here has a, um, the tab is on the back side, so it's kind of a little bit of a pain to get to. And then this one's easy, the tab's on the front. All right, so now I'm gonna cut off all these old zip ties. Don't cut your wires, it doesn't make for a good time. I'm also going to cut this zip tie in here that holds the clutch on, clutch line. There should be two of them. It's really hard to see, it's on the bottom of this riser right here. All right, there it goes. Make sure you get that out of there. So now your clutch, it's gotten a lot longer. Your brake should have also gotten a lot longer, at least a little bit. All right, good to go. So now what you're gonna wanna do is lift back up on your fairing and set it back up like you're putting it on. Now you have your, this is the clutch side and then the one with the two on it is the throttle side. Fly-by-wire is right here. It's typically on the post right here. You gotta use a pick or a knife or something to engage. Press into the top this little piece right there. I'll show you when we get it off. After that, that's all your connectors. The one on the right side and then three on the left, throttle, and then your switches. Lift up on the fairing again, tilt back, 
Make sure it stays straight. Don't let your bars turn. So now we should be able to feed these through here, feed those through there. Same thing on this side, free it up a little bit. And what you're gonna grab next is your quarter inch drive or your quarter inch Allen. And you're gonna just break all these loose. Make sure you get good engagement in these uh, riser bolts, the top clamp bolt, mainly just because they get corrosion in them and then you might not get good engagement. And then now you're stripping out riser clamp bolts and you kind of need those and you gotta be able to torque them. Make sure you keep a hold of your bars so they don't turn and smack into your gas tank because saving yourself money can turn into spending a lot of money really fast. Once you get them all, almost all the way out. All right. So now there's a set of bars. So we've got our old handlebars. And if you have a 19 street glide or, you know, anything pretty much 16 and up, you're in really good spot because these are like the easiest bars to do. There's a couple little tricks that I do, but I'm about to show you all that. It's really like super straightforward. Take the shells off your bars. This one's missing the little odometer or trip switch. To get that off, you just pull up and pull out. So grip comes off. This is the clutch side. Again, you might need a little pick or trusty old Milwaukee. All right, clutch sides off. Same thing on this side. Easy, easy day, dude. I mean, there's no reason this can't be done within like an hour. For me, of course, it's taking forever because I video everything. So once you got that off, front side comes off too. You can do this on the bike. It's easier for me, in my opinion, to do it off of the bike just because they're coming off anyway. All right, so now you got to get your throttle by wire out of the bars. Now, typically the factory stuff starts to slide out very easy. And then once you start sliding it out, you got to just feed the wires through occasionally, making sure that you're not going to pinch or rip or pull anything out of the pin so i'm just feeding it in and out probably very hard to see this i got the gopro on the chest cam so i don't have to have some boring ass shots just on a tripod all the time and i think we can get more personal all right there's your old bars i got like stacks of these there's actually like four over here in my scrap bucket now there's five this right here separates the men from the boys. They can cut your zip tie, off, zip tie off. Now what you're gonna do, you don't have to do this, but I'm telling you, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. I've done tons of bars and I never thought to cut these off until like one time my boss was like, hey, all you gotta do is cut the vinyl tubing off and it won't get stuck. Not that it won't get stuck, it's just the possibility of getting stuck is a lot less, I feel. Just don't cut into your wire and don't cut yourself. Use a new razor blade. All right, so once you have your wires, the loom cut off of them, just like so, this trash out of there and taped them up on both sides, left and right. Set your bars out the way that they're going to go. Your throttle by wire side obviously goes on the right. You can tell because the notches and all that. Now, this is the only thing that you, that you could maybe consider special because I'm going to use an air compressor to blow this through, but honestly, you can, Put a nut on this or small nut and just jiggle it through the bars um that's what i used to do but then i wised up start blowing it through the air compressor so on your throttle by wire side you are going to want to feed the wire in so on your throttle by wire side you want to feed the wire you on your throttle by wire side you want to feed the string through the grip like the end of the bar just because you're gonna tie on to your throttle by wire first. And then what I like to do is hold that so I don't blow too much through the bars. Get this started in there a little bit. Now you're just gonna take your air blower. Voila, let me go shut that shit off. What you're gonna wanna do is start with your throttle by wire, take your ends and tie it with the tape. Put a little bit of string through there just so you have something to hold on to because you don't really need a, a whole ton of tape. Tape this up nice and smooth. Try to keep your cables, like your connectors and your string and all that as flat as possible, if that makes sense. Uh, just so you can slide it through the bars easier. This works with every set of bars um, that you're gonna internally wire. Now is reach up in here, grab some of your string out until you can start feeding your throttle by wire in. Also make sure you got the right side. So we're on the throttle side. So you got your start and run and all that. So this is how I do it. You can do it any other way. Um, 
If you know a better way, I'd love to know. Please let me know in the comments. So then what I'm gonna do is right in front of the throttle by wire, you're going to lay your switch cables. Now this is the best part about using the string, long string, pull out a bunch, no big deal. No harm, no foul. Now with this one, I like to fold one of them back and then just tape up over the other one. Um, doesn't have to be pretty. You want it to be pretty thin. Now that you got that going, start pulling it through your bars. Pull your throttle by wire back a little bit just so you can get the room. It works easy if you have two people doing it. I do not have that luxury 90% of the time. So now all we're gonna do is start feeding them through the bars, right? I like to grab them both a little bit, get it started. You're just gonna wanna feed and pull at the same time. Um, don't pull too hard and don't try to push too hard. If you get to a bind, you can kind of like rock it back and forth. Um, but it's this side's actually going very well. Get it untangled before you get too far. All right, I can start seeing the plug, one of the plugs now. Oops. Keep feeding. It's hard to do with, you know, trying to balance it yourself. You can do this on the bike. I don't prefer to. I feel like I don't ever have enough room. All right. So there you go. There you have that. I got the switches. I got the throttle by wire. We're just going to run this all the way out. Now, you may or may not be able to run your o-ring on your throttle by wire find that out really quick make sure you line up the teeth if they're new bars sometimes you have to grind that out or sand it out this one's already sanded these are used bars the customer brought them in but still gonna work the other side is way easier you only have one wire it's super simple same process um, i'm not gonna film that all right so I went ahead before I grabbed the camera again because it was charging. We're still running low on battery. I put the grips on. I loosely installed my switch housings, both sides, grips, switch housings. You can still move them, right? So you can still position them. Uh, this side, you're going to have to, if you want to move your throttle, you got to slide it back and twist it or whatever. You can turn your housing, no problem. So now we're going to take these, and this is how I do it. Take the bars, take the bars, feed them into their perspective spot. I take the clamp, all right, and I start two of the four. Now, if you think I'm forgetting Loctite, don't worry. It's in my pocket about to fall out. I just do this so I can, for one, I got to gauge where the bars are going. And two, it's easier with only one person. Try to make sure they're centered. Make sure that you're not crushing any of your wires. So if you have a street glide or a road glide, either one, you have to make sure that your fairing is still going to clear. It's not going to hit or rub or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is pop our fairing up like we've been doing. Get it in the mounts. All right, so now what you want to look for is that your bars aren't going to, aren't touching your fairing. So this one's got to come back a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's touching a little bit. And you know, granted, you do have a little bit of play. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of play. Like there's your spot and they're touching. So the main reason you don't want it touching your fairing other than like scratching up your inner fairing um, is it's gonna make some noise when you're going down the road. It's that weird like plasticky sound that you get in like older vehicles. It's annoying as shit. You don't want to do it. So it takes a little bit of adjustment. Same thing. Pop your fairing up. Tilt her back. 
straighten your bars out. Don't be a chump. The usual. So the only thing I don't like about 12s is because like, personally, I would extend the wires just a little bit. Grab a T27, your clamshells. Once you have your T27 and your clamshells, you can go ahead and put your clutch and brake master cylinders back on. This allows you to, this is why I leave these controls loose, is so I can get like, the proper spacing. Sometimes, if you saw it right there, I had to slide, or like the, the switch housing slid over a little bit. Also, if you have an older bike, uh, please be careful of your brake switch, brake light switch. Um, super easy to break the old school brake light switch when putting your master cylinder back on. All right, so this is basically the only thing I dislike about doing these, and I forgot to film it, but pretty much I just take the connectors out of their fixtures, fish them up to the front and tie them up in there um, to that, back to the connectors. I don't like doing that. It's, I feel like it's the cheap way, the easy way out. Um, it will definitely be fine. It won't be a problem, but I just would prefer to use like a six inch extension from NAMS. Six inches is plenty. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do, I already zip tied some stuff out the way, ran all that, we're pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is take my handy dandy blue Loctite and I am going to put some Loctite, you know, a, a healthy amount. And we're going to start them back into their spots. Easy enough. I like to do in a crisscross pattern. 20. 20. 20. Wobbly, wobbly. 20. All right. Now we're gonna throw some zip ties on that, pull the fairing back up, bolt it off, and then throw the outer fairing back on the windshield and we're good as gold, dude. I'll end up adjusting the controls to the customer's liking. Um, I mean, I like it. It's comfortable. Um, I don't think it's gonna be too tall for her. Of course, the key fob's like five feet away. Oh, it feels good. I like that, all right. All right, so now you just reverse the process. Throw your trim piece on, get in the dimples, position your fairing the way it's supposed to, get these all started. Sometimes you gotta wiggle the fairing a little bit. Wiggle it just a little bit. Same thing on the other side, bolt started. All right, so tighten these down. Good and tight, old German torque. All right, so the last thing you might have to do is clear your codes. Um, let's see if this has a check engine light on. It probably does. Fire it up. No check engine light. That's a good sign. Function test. Yeah, turn signals. Turn signals. High beam, low beam, high beam, low beam. Horn. All right. All right. So my camera died before I could finish filming the install of the front fairing, but it's the same way it came off. And then I went back and tightened up the controls. So super simple, super easy. It's easy for you to do yourself, save yourself time and money. Don't go to the dealership, do it out of your house. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this video. 12 inch bars on a 2019 Street Glide in about an hour and a half, and I filmed it all. Not bad at all, in my opinion. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you learned something. I hope that you can do the same install on your own bike. Um, 
please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, ride safe and ride smart. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.